Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zia Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at the NFL TAC Conference in Denver. I'm at the Sumer Sports Stand with Krista Hayes uh, from Sumer. Uh, Krista, you're VP of Sales? Yes. That's right, yeah. Uh, you've been here three years. Uh, first time I've talked to you, though, so for my audience, just a quick background on yourself and what you do at Sumer. Sure. Um, so before I was at Sumer, I was with the Carolina Panthers for 11 years as their director of software and solutions, where we wrote in-house applications that support the coaching and scouting staff. So you like your scouting systems, your film systems, your draft board. Um, and then I got an email uh, in February of 22 saying that there was a sports analytics startup that was recruiting, and I thought it was a phishing email, and I responded to it, yeah. and here we are. You responded to a phishing email? I did. I'm easily, easily tricked. You're duped. Okay. Yeah. So all you fishers out there, yeah. send, <laughs> send Chris some emails. Yeah. Now, uh, your background isn't atypical for Sumer. In fact, that's one of the things I like about Sumer. While there's lots of tech companies that want to sell in sports, they don't often have the sports pedigree that Sumer does, right? And so in addition to yourself, just talk about the years of experience at Sumer doing sports uh, analytics by sports people. Yeah, sure. So we have over 600 years of combined uh, professional football experience that spans coaching, scouting, and various other front role or front office roles, such as myself in the software position. We have several data scientists who also um, have a background uh, that come from clubs, and this is sort of what's earned us the trust of our clients across the NFL and NCAA. Hmm. Well, that's great. Now, so you really understand football operations? Yes. Right. And uh, I just I watched the presentation here a little while ago where you talked about the inefficiencies. Um, of the process and some of the challenges companies have uh, or the sports teams have and so talk about what those are like what, what, what are those challenges right so um, at a sports organization such as a football club um, the technology department isn't often given enough resources um, to effectively innovate right so you're basically putting out daily fires you're making sure that things are still running you're duct taping it together right and then you're also sort of pigeonholed by the football calendar itself um, during the season you can't change anything because everything needs to keep working if film goes down everyone freaks yeah. out and then there's one-off events like the draft and the combine where you have to do a bunch of ad hoc work for and then once it's finished you forget about it and you're like oh I'll be fine it'll come around next year and then it comes around next year and you're like man I wish I had done something about that yeah. last year yeah yeah so it seems like it's a bunch of sprints with not enough people trying to keep the lights on yes but, you'll, but still trying to innovate yeah exactly yeah. You, yeah. you want to like help your front office and you want to bring them cutting edge tools, but you just don't have the time. Yeah. And so what's the byproduct of that? When you talk about the workflow that companies have and the, the type of tasks they do, um, walk me through that. Um, like in the front office? Yeah. In a role such as mine? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, like I said, we built all of these applications in-house that support our scouting groups and they would write all of these evaluations so that come draft time they understood which players they were going to select but then they had all of these one-off questions where they would approach you like give me a list of players that have a grade over six and they're wide receivers and a height over six two and a weight over 200 right and so these little small questions add up and they send you down these tangents and paths and you don't get that time back, right? By the end of the day, um, you realize you've just been putting out fires again all day, yeah. right? So you had an interesting chart that showed time spent, so mm -hmm. the pyramid, and I'll put it up on the screen now. Um, and so most of the time is spent at the bottom of this, right? Yeah, so yeah. most of the time is spent at the bottom of this pyramid where... Which is the least value. <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> is the least value. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the most time costly where you're trying to support all these other departments, including your front office. So you're like your data groups, um, your analysts, you're bringing in new data sources for them. You're trying to clean it. You're trying to stand up new infrastructure for them. A lot of times the data guys are just doing local development. And so it makes it really hard to reuse their work in an effective way. Um, and then again, the reporting that I mentioned and the ad hoc daily requests. And because we're spending all of our time at the bottom of this pyramid, we don't get to the top of it, which is where all of that value add work is. The high impact customized work that you can do for your organization to move the needle. Okay, and how is Sumer Sports helping the teams flip that chart upside down? So Sumer Sports is aiming to give time back to the systems and data groups. And we all want more time. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We want to have the bandwidth to innovate yeah. instead of just keeping up. So um, we are, uh, we, 
put together several data uh, sources in aggregate and we clean and we import and we analyze and we publish that data to our clients both through our web platform, mobile platform, and then we have APIs as well if they want to pull it into their own systems. Um, we are innovating on workflows uh, such as film. I think a certain film workflow has been around for the past uh, 10 or so years and we wanted to sort of update it um, and cut some steps out of the process because if you're watching film all day and one one task takes one second um, that those seconds add up right yeah. and so you just want to make it more efficient to get to those insights faster for your club and then we have a AI that an AI assistant that we have trained specifically for football teams our proprietary data where they can approach with those questions instead of tapping their system and data guys on the shoulder, right? So just aiming to make things a little bit more efficient um, from every single aspect. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's fascinating. And uh, so when you bring this into the clubs, do they jump up and down and go, yes, this is what I want? Or, or, or uh, is there some pushback? What are those barriers? Yeah, so um, it's sort of a mix of both, right? Because clubs um, are working with their own systems, right? And so the transition cost of switching that to anything is very high, right? If, you don't, then, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're working with um, maybe a slightly uh, more wise clientele hmm. um, and the learning curve for them is a little bit steep sometimes. And they understand it is broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's a communication gap, right? right. Uh, everybody right, right. wants to be in data and analytics, but it's really hard to explain those analytics to your stakeholders in a way that they can trust, right? Especially with uh, the football group specifically. Hmm. Um, so they're looking to innovate, but they just don't quite know how to do it yet. All right, so last question, just some advice. So you got NFL clubs, competitive pressure has never been higher, lots of data out there that you got to use. Right, nobody's got any time, obviously, yep. right? In fact, I took a time management course once and all the guys said was there is no more time. And I'm like, okay, well, thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> what, what's some advice on how to leverage AI to give yourself time back? Because that is our most precious commodity. Yeah, um, so I think there are several ways that AI can be implemented to give time back, not only just in like your personal life with like scheduling and task prioritization, um, but in other ways such as um, code, right? If you adopt it into your software practices and then if you um, look at what we're doing with or standing up a uh, AI that's specific to a certain industry, you can start to help give time back to your stakeholders mm. because then it's a tool that they can use instead of basically using you as a proxy to answer those questions. Yeah, all right, uh, anything else you wanna add? Uh, no, just happy to be here. Yeah, well, it was great to get to know you, and it's great to see uh, some direct football experience within some of these tech companies that are trying to, you know, service these industries, because you don't always see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, uh, all right, well, thanks. So on behalf of Krista Hayes from Sumer Sports, I'm C.S. Caravalo from CK Region. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like, hit the subscribe button as well, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Thanks.